it's me again, Joy from Art Garage. Um, we have a new project and a new book for you today. So, this book is super funny, and it's we're going to do this project here, these three different things. But at the end, we're going to do something a little different than what we normally do at Art Garage. So, stick around, and uh, after the project, we'll do something fun, something different. Okay. So this book is called Chicks and Salsa, and it is by Erin Reynolds, and it's illustrated by Paulette Bogan. All right, look at these animals. They look so bored. They're just so bored. I'm gonna spice things up at the farm. There were grumblings in the hen house of Nuthatcher Farm. The chickens were tired of chicken feed. The rooster took it upon himself to solve this problem. Mrs. Nuthatcher, the farmer's wife, had started watching cooking, show, cooking shows in the afternoons. The rooster was perched on a fence post outside the farmer's window when he discovered the solution to his problem. Salsa! What? Salsa? Hmm. Led by the rooster, the chickens crept into the garden where they took tomatoes and uprooted onions. That night, the chickens ate chips and salsa, though nobody was quite certain where the chickens got the chips. The tasty tang of tomatoes and onions hung over the barnyard, and the rooster said, Ole! Very soon, there were rumblings at the duck pond of Nuthatcher Farm. Inspired by the chickens, the ducks decided that they were tired of fish. With the rooster's encouragement, the ducks dipped into the garden where they selected cilantro and gathered garlic. That night the ducks ate guacamole, though nobody was quite certain where the ducks got the avocados. The spicy scent of garlic and cilantro hung over the barnyard and the duck said, Ole! The next morning, there were rumblings in the pig pen of Nuthatcher Farm. Overwhelmed by the enticing aroma, the pigs decided that they were tired of slop. While the rooster distracted Farmer Nuthatcher, the pigs plodded into the garden where they borrowed beans and chopped chilies. That night, the pigs ate nachos, but nobody was quite certain where the pigs got the nacho cheese sauce. The delightful deliciousness of cheese and chilies hung over the barnyard, and the pig said, Olé! And everyone knows when a passion for southwestern cuisine takes hold of farm animals and so many sumptuous, spicy, savory scents collide in the barnyard air, it can only lead to one thing. Can you guys guess what it is? What is all this going to lead to? Fiesta! And what does fiesta mean in Spanish? Party! The rooster got things organized, then returned to his fence post to watch for a good enchilada recipe. The horses decorated the barn, the bull practiced his Mexican hat dance, though nobody was quite certain where the bull got the sombrero. And the 
chickens, ducks, and pigs snuck into the garden. But all of their spicy southwestern supplies were gone! The scallions had been stolen! The peppers had been pilfered! The limes had been lifted! But there were slurpings in the kitchen of Nuthatcher Farm. Stirred by the succulent smells of the barnyard, Mrs. Nuthatcher did decided to make tamales for the county fair. A saucy sweetness hung over the farmhouse kitchen, and Mrs. Nuthatcher said, That evening, the chickens ate their chicken feed, the ducks ate their fish, and the pigs ate their slop. But while the nuthatchers were at the fair, the rooster crept into the kitchen and borrowed a French cookbook. And the next morning, the rooster ate crepes with white grapes and champagne sauce. Though nobody was quite certain where the rooster learned to read. That's a mystery. And a satisfied smile stretched over the rooster's beak. And the rooster said, ooh la la. inspired me to make different headbands. We've got our chicken. We've got our duck. trace for you to cut out. And we also will have strips of paper in here for your headbands. You're going to need probably some help with these because um, it's best if you have somebody hold it there for you so you know how, how big it is. You can tape them, you can staple them. We're probably, I'll show you how to do both, but um, having a stapler again might be a good idea. Okay? So, what we're going to do first, we're going to do the chicken, and then the duck, and then the pig. So let me move, I'll move these out of the way, and we'll do those later. <clears throat> so after you cut out your patterns, okay, uh, you're going to take the white one, that's going to be the chicken's head, okay, the chicken pattern, and you're going to trace that, and then cut it out. Okay, we will need that. And let's go ahead and trace everything first and then we'll cut everything out. Now this is called a chicken comb. It's the comb on top of the chicken's head. You just have to fit it on there and then trace it. Okay. And then there'll be, oh! And you have the little waddle. This is the thing in the chicken that hangs down under their beak. It's 
called a waddle. We're going to, I think it's called a waddle. It's called a waddle on turkey. I think it might be the same thing on a chicken. Okay. We're gonna trace that on the red too. It'll fit that aside. And then we have to tra trace the beak. So we have a piece of yellow paper for the chicken's beak. Okay. And now we have to cut them out. are probably getting a lot of cutting practice out while you've been out of school. At least I hope you have been. We've been giving you lots of things that you can practice with. <laughs> okay, so those are all the pieces. So what you're going to do now is take your glue And the waddle goes on top, or the comb goes on top of the chicken's head. And you can kind of, you can have fun with it. You can put it straight on his head, or you can tilt it a little bit. That's kind of fun. I'm gonna tilt mine a little bit. It makes him look a little, little crazy. Then we're gonna, now when you put your beak on, you want it to hang down a little bit because that just looks more fun, I think. I mean, you could do it up there too, but I'm gonna put mine down a little bit because I think that looks a little more fun. And this little waddle thing, just put a tiny bit on the back at the top, the flat part, and just kind of slide it underneath your beak. See? Okay. And now let's put some eyes on this guy. Okay, so take a marker, any marker will do, Sharpies, <clears throat> just regular markers, colored pencils, crayons, anything. And what I thought would be fun is if you make one eye a little bit bigger than the other one. <laughs> Gives them a little more personality. Okay? And after you get your chicken done, in your kit you will have a white strip. Okay? That's for the chicken and the duck. There's two white strips one for the chicken, one for the duck, and then some pink strips that you're gonna have to put together to do your pig. But you're gonna take that, the, the flat edge of your chicken head that you made is gonna line up with the flat edge right in the middle of your white strip, okay? And you're gonna put glue. Don't put glue on the, the yellow beak because that's hanging down, right? You're just gonna put glue along the edge right and then up here and then line up that flat edge with the bottom of your strip and there is your chicken mask or your chicken headband <laughs> okay now, this is the part where you're probably going to need somebody to help you. And so, when you put this on your head, you need to measure it. So you just kind of put it on. And for me, 
That's about right, okay? So I'm gonna hold it there. If you have an adult helping you, wah! Okay, just gonna hold it there. You can tape it like this. Or you can use masking tape or duct tape or whatever. Or you can take a stapler and just staple it in a few spots. Okay? So there's your chicken headband. All right. Now, we're gonna make the duck. All right, all of these can go off to the side. All right. Now, there's gonna be a very teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny uh, pattern. This one is for the duck's eyebrows because I don't know, to, know if you remember, if you noticed in the book, they have these great expressions on their faces. You see how their little eyebrows? I made a pattern, but you can actually cut out your own. You don't need to use it. It's kind of tricky because it's really skinny. I'll put it in there, but you don't need to use that. I really like this guy. <laughs> he just looks kind of irritated. But I think that's funny. Okay, so we <clears throat> are gonna do the duck now. So you have a white piece of paper for the duck's head, okay? You have a yellow or an orange piece of paper for the duck's bill, and then you have this tiny little pattern and a little piece of black for his eyebrows. And again, you can cut the eyebrows any way you want to. You do not have to use that pattern because I know it's really small. Um, you can just cut whatever you want with the scissors too, okay? We got that. We got that. And I'm just gonna, it's really tiny, so it's gonna be very challenging, but there's nothing wrong with a challenge. Okay, and that, and I'll put these off to the side over here, and we'll cut them out. On the bill, if you just kind of draw a line with your marker there, that'll kind of give you um, the bottom part of the bill on there. All right. And now I'm gonna try to cut that teeny tiny eyebrow And I have that folded in half so that when I cut through that, I'll end up with two. But you can also just take your paper and maybe, oh my goodness, this would be so funny. I'm gonna show you something you could do with that one because he'll look like an angry duck. Um, or you could make bushy ones. Maybe he's got big bushy eyebrows. That could be fun. Okay, you can do a lot of things with that. You can. Any of these things that we have patterns for, you don't have to use the patterns. You can make up your own animals. That's totally fine. Of course you can do that. All right, I'm gonna take my marker and just go over that. All right, and we're gonna, again, I want the duck bill to kind of hang down a little bit. Let's see, does that look good? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna put some glue on there. Okay, so with the eyebrows that I cut, you could turn them like that. <laughs> you could turn them this way and put little eyes underneath. You can, you can even put one up and one down. Maybe he'll look confused that way, I don't know, right? 
Um, you could take your bushy eyebrows <laughs> and let's put some eyes on there. That'll be more fun. Okay. All right, so there's the bushy eyebrows. <laughs> then you've got these, and these, these could make him look kind of surprised, maybe, right? Um, or you could take this piece, remember? And you could do it like that. <laughs> and he looks like a mad duck. You can do lots of things with little pieces of paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the ones I cut out. And I'm going to just put a little glue there and a little glue there so I don't have to worry about glue getting all over my fingers because these things are so tiny. Does he look a little worried? No, he looks kind of happy. It's amazing things, eyebrows, that can make you look sad or happy or whatever. All right, and then you get to take your other piece of white paper, okay? And the flat part of the duck is gonna go along the flat part of the white strip in the middle, just like the chicken, okay? So take a little glue and put it along that bottom edge. You don't wanna put any glue on the bill, the orange bill, because that will be all gluey and it will get glue all over your head. You don't want to do that. Okay. Line that up. So we have, now, these colors are very, very similar, but they're different enough that I think you can tell the difference between the pig's nose and his head. Do you see how it's slightly different? Can you see that? So, this big piece is for the head, okay? So you're going to line it up with the bottom, and you're going to take that pencil and trace that pattern. You see? And then this piece is for the pig's nose. Just fit it on there any old way. Okay, and then we're gonna cut them out. So that's gonna go on like that, okay? Again, let the nose hang down off the bottom a little bit. It just looks kind of, looks a little more fun. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue right here. And let the nose hang down just a little bit. Then, we've got to put in the nostrils. So we're gonna do some nice big, let me turn it a little bit just to see. Right, those pig nostrils. And then we're gonna do just some cute little eyes. Okay, now with your headband, these two pieces, I don't know, if you have a very small head, this will probably fit, but we couldn't find any paper that was uh, 
a longer length. So we're just going to, actually we can even glue these pieces together. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna put a little bit of glue just on the edge of one of them. And we're gonna put that over there like that. Remember, count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That's just as long as you're supposed to wash your hands. Twenty seconds. Okay. So now, when you put the pig on here too, that's going to really glue that. Really, it's going to make it even more secure. So. Do the same thing like you did before. Put some glue right along that edge and up a little bit. Man, my Q-tip is coming apart there. Maybe I'll use the other side. Okay. And right over that place where you glued it together, go ahead and put this little pig face and line up the straight edge with the bottom of the strip of paper. Probably need a little more up here. And the same thing. Put it up to your head. This one you might have to trim, okay? So put it up to your head. I'm just gonna wrap it around. It's gonna overlap a little bit more. Okay, so um, staple. Now, because this one's so long, it's probably going to be a good idea for you to trim it a bit. So just kind of trim off the extra on the inside and the outside. Okay, and there's the pig. Okay, now we're going to do something a little different. Um, we are going to have a fun, we're going to make some salsa and we're going to make some guacamole and we're going to make some nachos. Why not? It seems like fun to me, but the thing you have to do is when we're making the salsa, have to wear your chicken headband. Okay. And when we're making the guacamole, you got to wear your duck. And when we're making the nachos, you got to wear your pig. Okay. Deal. All right. So let me get some things together and we will make some salsa, guacamole, and nachos together, okay? Okay, we're gonna make some salsa. How fun, We've never, I've never cooked with you guys. Um, you gotta put your chicken hat, or your chicken headband on because we are making salsa and in the book, the chicken made the salsa. So you need a tomato, you need some onion, you need some garlic, you need some cilantro, you need a jalapeno pepper, and you guys, if you like it spicy, leave the seeds in. If you don't want it spicy, you need to get the seeds out. And before we do anything, you must make sure your hands are washed. So if your hands aren't clean, you need to go do that right now, okay? Now, and we also have a lime and some salt and pepper. Okay, um, take, all you have to do is you take these different things, you chop them up, and you stir them together. Super easy. It's more gonna kind of be gonna be more like a pico de gallo a little bit because sometimes salsa is really chunky and we're gonna make chunky salsa. All right. Now, this is dangerous. I don't want you to use a knife like that uh, if you are younger. If you are younger, you need to make sure that you're asking mom and dad to help you. Okay. Um, always make sure it's okay with your mom and dad to do anything in the kitchen. Okay. So. You're gonna take your tomato. I always cut the this part off, and then I turn it over so it doesn't roll around on me. <laughs> okay? So you're just gonna cut it. Just move it off to the side. You might have a better way of chopping, and if you do, go for it. Get down to this part, uh, you're going to be really careful. 
I think I'm going to stop and just turn it over there and cut it this way. Just to be safe, so I, I don't want to cut myself. And then you're going to just chop it. So now you're going to take each little piece. Or if you have a, like I said, if you have a better way to do it, I don't think my knife is very sharp. <laughs> so I'm not going to do it that way by just taking all of them and chopping through. But when you, when you do that, you can scoop it up into your bowl. Get it out of your way. I chopped up all my tomatoes and now you might want to wipe off your cutting board right and now you're gonna do some onion some of you guys might not like onion and if onions a little too spicy for you you can always use green onions okay um, I'm gonna go ahead and use up this onion and it says here you need a tablespoon that's not really very much so I'm probably gonna even just Cut that, don't need all of that. I am not a chef. <laughs> so if some of you out there are really good at cooking and you're watching me do this and you're like, yeah, sorry, I'm doing the best I can. And I'm having fun. Ooh, this smells good. So now I'm going to scoop up my onion and I'm going to put it in with my tomatoes. Okay, we'll get that out of the way. And the next thing we have to do, maybe wipe off your board a little bit, is some garlic. This might be another thing that you might not like, um, but we're going to do it because that's what the recipe says to do. I love garlic. And if you have at home a little garlic press, you could totally use that. That would be fun to do. Ooh, my eyes are watering. The onion is strong. All right. So this is a very big knife for this job. I don't know if you need to be doing that. So garlic press is a great idea. Um, or have a parent help you with this one because this is this is pretty this is a very tiny thing that you're trying to cut with a big knife or use a much 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 smaller knife but this is all I brought with me from home So that's really not very much. This is probably enough. I chose, my friend Gabriella gave me this recipe. And uh, I asked her to give me a very simple recipe. And she delivered and made this awesome, very easy salsa recipe and guacamole recipe. Okay, and now we need a little cilantro. This is a kind of parsley, I think. How much cilantro do we need? A tablespoon, so let's chop this up. This is 
kind of hard to cut too. You might have a parent help you with that too. I'm just going to put that in there. I might put a little more of that in a little later. And here is the jalapeno. We're going to cut it in half. And the reason why I'm cutting it in half is because I want to get rid of those seeds. Do you see all the seeds in there? Okay. Those are those will be very spicy. And if you don't really like spicy or you don't want it too spicy, you want to get rid of those. Um, you might take a fork or a spoon or something and kind of pull them out or just kind of grab them like that. And you can save this other half of the jalapeno. We're going to use that probably a little later to do our uh, guacamole or our nachos. All right, so I'm going to chop this jalapeno up. And again, you don't have to use this. Put that in there. Move all that over. All right, so there is all of our ingredients in the bowl. Can you see that? Okay, now we're going to just take a spoon or Whatever you got, mix it up. Oh my goodness, this smells so good. And you're going to take your lime. You're going to cut it in half. And you're just going to squeeze some of that lime in there. Some of you might like a lot of lime, some of you might not like very much. So I'm just going to squeeze half of the lime in there. If you have a, a special lemon squeezer of some kind. You could do that. We just don't have that here at the art garage. And we're doing the best we can with what we've got. And we need a little salt and pepper. So there's some salt. We put in some salt <laughs> and a little <laughs> pepper. Okay, and stir it up. Y'all have your chicken hats on? And what do we say? Ole! There's some salsa. Okay, now we're gonna make guacamole. That's the next thing. I'll put the salsa behind the chicken hat. All right. Okay, it's time for guacamole. Put on your duck headbands. Okay. So this is what we're gonna do. You need an avocado, okay? It needs to be kind of soft, not a really hard one. If it's really soft, that'll probably be okay too, but a really hard one is not gonna work so good. Have an adult help you, okay? Because we have to cut this in half. Okay, now, this is a kind of a fun way to get the pit out. You don't do it but you can watch me do it. Kind of stick it in there and then twist it and it comes right out. How fun is that? Okay, so now I'm gonna set that down, okay? What we have to do is scoop this out, okay? And put it in a bowl because we have to smash it up, okay? I'm gonna use our salsa fork here and I'm going to get all of this out of here. Okay, do the other one. All right, so we got our, the, the flesh out of the avocado. Now you're gonna take a fork or a potato masher and you're gonna smash it. Smash up that avocado. Now we need to take, we cut, we cut a lime in half to make our salsa. Now use the other half and we're gonna squeeze that 
over our avocado. This will also keep it from turning brown. Okay, all right. And then we need some more cilantro, and it says here we need a tablespoon. Probably about the same that I did last time. So you could have, if you wanted to, you could have chopped up a bunch and just saved it for this one, for this recipe too. But. All right, take some cilantro and put it in the bowl. Ooh, that smells so good. I love that smell. All right. And now we need a chopped green onion. This is green onion. Okay, this is the long skinny one. It's different from the round onions that you might find. These are a little more mild, I think, I've heard. So uh, it has the, the roots though here. We're not going to eat those. We're going to cut those off and then we're going to chop this up. And we need... Uh, a tablespoon. Let me wipe off my cilantro. Cut this one. You can add more if you want to. Okay, and then we need some more garlic, so I'm going to take off a clove. And this doesn't, doesn't make a lot, but you can double the recipe if you want to. Look at that. Guacamole. Yay. And what did we say? Yeah. Ole. All right. Now we're going to make some nachos. See you in a minute. All right. We're going to make some nachos. You got to put on your pig headband. Okay, here are those lovely tortilla chips. We're gonna put some tortilla chips on a platter or a plate, okay? If you want to add beans to this, you can cook up some refried beans, maybe put some ground beef in there if you want to. We're just gonna have cheesy guacamole salsa, guacamole salsa um, nachos. Okay, so here is that cheese sauce, that nacho cheese sauce, and I have a recipe for that. You guys can make it at home or use your own. But we're gonna pour that over our nachos. Got some jalapeno peppers in there. Chili powder. All right. And we're gonna put on our guacamole. Sprinkle it around on there so it's evenly. Evenly spread. Salsa, I'm just gonna use the wood work. 
put on our delicious salsa over the top. Yum! What do we say? Olay! Olay! All right, enjoy your nachos!